coming up with the idea for the sustain, like your system that is that, that you came up with. What what kind of like what was the like you know the beginning parts of that for you? Gosh, I, I mean, I think the beginning parts of that really were listening to you know the kind of music that was coming out. I mean, Jimi Hendrix, you know, Eric Clapton, and realizing that they were doing these wonderful new things with the guitar. Jimi Hendrix, in particular, did a lot with acoustic energy feedback to, to the string and you know there was to meet you face to face that was one of one of his secrets in that a lot of the tones that he got from the string were because he played so loud and he enveloped himself you know in a, in a feedback field and a lot of his tones were actually created on the string later on you know the industry kind of tried to simulate that and you know they turned everything down uh, but I heard stuff in there. I think he had began begun to organically explore the the way that a string vibrates. And I, I just really became, you know, um, just just really focused on going in that direction, back to the string, and that's what it's all been about. Yeah, you guys definitely. I mean, you definitely emphasize the idea of you know, like. The, the string, the acoustical energy and properties of it all, uh -huh. and it seems like I mean it's a wonderful guitar. You got a wonderful product. So I'm trying to like figure out why, why it kind of like came to this head, of, like you know, because you guys could have done anything. You could have made like a guitar synth or something like that, but instead you guys went, decided to take an approach that was wholly analog and very acoustical energy based. Well, I think I can tie it into the to the Moog philosophy. I mean, yeah. I've been you know associated with Moog for you know, three years now, but I did study all of Bob Moog's work way back when he started, so his ideas about design have always been, you know, in my head and, and, and a part of me. And what I thought the, the genius of the of the Moog synthesizer was, was Moog built a bridge between the musician and the and an elect a purely electronic source of sound, where that bridge was a good bridge, a bridge that allowed emotion to flow back and forth, and allowed emotional control over vibrating electrons. That was the genius of it. But in this case, to be true to that vision, you know, we have to realize that in this case, the source of the sound isn't vibrating electrons. The source of the sound is a guitar string. So you have to have a, a completely different technology approach to remain true to that vision. It wouldn't be about synthesis. It wouldn't be about MIDI. It wouldn't be about post-processing or trying to turn the guitar into a synthesizer. It would be about building a bridge between the musician and the possibilities of the vibrating string. And that's why it's true to the Moog vision. That's why it's working so well to do this with Moog, where your first thought would be, well, that's insane. They're a keyboard company. They're all about synthesis. This is guitar. It's a, you know, but it's not. It's actually very true to the vision of building a bridge of control for the musician to uh, articulate the guitar string. I completely agree. I actually was very suspect of the guitar when they first re like re released the press, and I'm actually blown away at this point in time. It seems like it's one of the like I'm interested. I want to go play one. I'm just like so interested in the, the whole concept that you guys came up with. You do, you do play guitar. Yeah, I do play guitar. I play a lot of guitar. Please sit and play. You know, yeah. we we have this saying. You know, playing is understanding, or playing is yeah. believing. This makes the instrument feel different. You can listen to the sounds all day. And that's when you go, oh, I see. You know. yeah. Definitely, man. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And I uh, really appreciate it.